Let's be real for a second. Your guitar chords are pretty boring right now. Like they're boring to the point that they've got me low-key checking my Snapchat during your playing on a guitar video that you actually clicked on watching. But no more, because we've got some tips that you can use on absolutely any chord that is gonna kind of fancy up your chords and kind of make them uh, a little less boring, a little more interesting, right? And the example we're gonna use is gonna sound like this. All right, so we just got two major chords that we're gonna work with right off the bat, uh, G major and C major. So uh, I congratulate you on learning G major and C major, but we're taking it to the big leagues. No more beginner stuff, strictly intermediate, borderline, possibly super advanced stuff we're working with right here. And uh, it's all gonna be tracking off of a root note. So in this G major chord, I'm sure you probably already know, the root note is the third fret on the low E string, okay? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the octave of that. So this is a G, the next highest G, and again, just how, I, how we got this, is we went through the major scale to find this G, the fifth fret on the D string. So you can always find the, the next highest pitch of a note if you're rooted on the E string by going two frets down, two strings down, okay? So this is gonna be a note that we're gonna incorporate into maybe like a lick or something that we can kind of use to break up the monotony of just a regular open chord, all right? So here's a G, and here's a G we're gonna kind of target. Now, I wanna surround this note with a couple other notes that are gonna sound good together. So the first one is gonna be the fifth fret on the A string. So 5A and 5D are two notes we're gonna use, and 7A and 7D are two notes that we're gonna use. These four notes are always going to be available to you off of the root of any major chord that you use. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about that in a second, but basically, we've got this open G chord, or we can take a G bar chord. Any kind of G voice chord you wanna use, we can slide into these four notes and play them however we want, all right? So, you play this G chord, maybe you're stuck here for like four counts. One, two, three, four, all right? You've already lost me. You've had one bar to do something impressive. I'm out. One, two, three, four. That's something a little bit different, you know? Maybe just, just that little bit extra kind of make things, makes things sound better, in my opinion, in certain circumstances. Again, sometimes you might want to just keep it, keep it chill, but for the purposes of what we're doing, we're gonna slide into these four notes and play two at a time. These are called double stops, all right? So if we just think, uh, like focus on the fifth fret of the A and D string, you can play it with one finger, and then go from five to seven, and seven to five, we can kind of add that to. Or the bar chord. So that was double stopping through it. We could do other things. We could do like a triplet, uh, like a hammer on to the D string, five, seven, A, D, G. Kind of just adding little, you know, little pieces of flair off of existing chords that you know, okay? Now, this this tip or trick or whatever you want to call it travels with absolutely any major chord. As long as you know where the root note is, you can kind of track where these notes are going to exist. So for a C major chord, there's the root note, the C. Now the same thing applies. We can go down two strings, down two frets to find the active C and then still kind of take those four notes around it. See? See, now I'm on 5, 7, D, and 5, 7, G. G. C. G. C. Okay, so anytime you know where the root note of a major chord is, you can find the according little four note pattern that you can use to accompany with it. Now this is, again, true with all major chords that you'd wanna use. Uh, we can kind of maybe take different voices of them. Like if we wanna add a third chord to this progression, something that sounds good with G and C, 
is a D, right? So if we take the D major chord, let's not even use the open one. Let's think of it more in a bar chord situation, even if we're not gonna play this bar chord. So the fifth fret on the A string is a D. Same thing applies. There's that octave D, or we can kind of see that four note pattern. Uh, I also did a video on pentatonic boxes that is kind of similar to what we're talking about here. We're really just taking four notes we always know are gonna sound good with certain chords in a specific key, and then just kind of combining them with that. So uh, for the G chord, there's our little four note kind of box thing. For the C chord, and then for the D chord, back to G. All right, so it's really just about tracking a root note and then kind of, you know, doing whatever you want, whatever your heart's desire is calling. So even if you're playing like this D here, you can still think of maybe some of these chords down, or some of these notes to attach to that open chord up here. And it looks like you're doing something really impressive because you're sliding through the fretboard. So these are just a couple major chords. I might do another video on uh, some minor chord stuff that you can do. But basically, anytime you see a major chord, always think, where's my root note? What can I do off of this root note to add uh, like a certain type of sound or a feel to these chords if the situation calls for you to just start rocking it out? Now, even if it's not an open chord that you're familiar with, let's say like a, like a B flat major chord, something like that. The same thing applies. You don't even have to play it as a full bar chord. You can play maybe uh, like the middle four strings and then just slide into anything else you might want to play because there's that octave. Okay? So, it's really just kind of like little tips that you can use to kind of start familiarizing yourself with the fretboard. Once you take a couple of these uh, little pieces and extend them from a chord, then maybe you wanna kinda do the next thing, maybe extend them like an extra note through a pentatonic run, something like that. But I do think that starting to build maybe little lead pieces off of existing chords you know is a great way to start exploring the fretboard a little bit more and maybe, I don't, I don't really wanna call it like a lead style playing, but just kind of like ha knowing where the notes that are available to you are and then being able to use your own creativity to rock them out however you wanna be and ultimately sound less boring. And if you have any questions, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website, and I'll talk to y'all soon. Thanks a lot.